Hey everybody and welcome back for part 12, Core Fundamentals of Web Development. In this video, we're going to talk about transitions and we're going to apply them to various elements on our application. Let's dive in. So if we compare our uh, finished link saver here to our original one, and let's uh, make these the right, the correct size. If we compare these, there's a couple of uh, transitions here that are missing. One is this little uh, kind of expand the 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 width of our text, so the space in between the lettering. Uh, then there's the the scale of this button here; it grows a little bit. There's also a transition on our button, so it doesn't immediately change colors. It's really hard to tell a difference, probably here. These trans these don't really have a transition; they change color immediately. And our final example has a slight transition. I think it's like a quarter of a second. So those are a couple of things that we're going to add here, but first we're going to jump into a just a separate project to get a little bit of practice with transitions. So I've got a, a couple of new files here: transitions and transitions, or transitions HTML and transitions CSS. And we've got a couple of different things that are commented out that we're going to work with, and uh, we've got the uh, just a, a div with a class of box and then a slide right. We'll talk about slide right in a second. So our box class is just what gives this thing its shape, its color, and its positioning. So it's it's 50 by 50, got a background color of a, of a reddish color. It's got absolute positioning, so it's going to be absolute relative to the page. And then we're basically putting it 50% uh, down from the top, minus 25, so that'll put it kind of dead in the vertical center. So that's basically going to put it in the center of our page, and that's where we want to start. So the first thing we want to look at is the slide right um, transition. And we'll talk first. So what we want our transition to do for slide right is basically just move our box to the right. So I'm going to target that slide right class. And then we're going to say transform translate x. So this is going to translate to move it in the x-axis, which is your horizontal, your left to right, or right to left if it's negative. Uh, we want to translate it 300 pixels. So if we, if we save this, and I put my say I put my mouse where the box used to be and save this file notice it's gonna move maybe off the screen a little too far there we go so let's get rid of let's get rid of our console so notice that it's now moved to the outside of our box now without that just to kinda show you that again almost dead center and then save it and moves over to the right but it's kind of it, it just goes immediately to the transformed position it doesn't have a, a gradual change and that's really what our transition is so there are several different properties for transitions that we can work with. Uh, first is transition property, which is going to say what transitions do we want to, or what property changes do we want to transition on. So right now we've got a transform change. So we could uh, come in here, we could select all, and if we save all and refresh this page, we should see it. It's still starting at the right, so there's one more property we need to add. Or we could actually target the, the property that actually is changing, which is transform. All right. And then to get this to work, we need to add a transition duration. So if I do two seconds, it's going to start from the center. It's going to come all the way over here across the span of two seconds. So let's save it. And we should see it just kind of slide out to the right. So that's perfect. We can also add a transition, uh, let's see, delay. So this will have it wait for, let's say, three seconds before it actually does the transition. So one, two, three, and it should take off. There we go. Then there's the transition timing function. And basically, this is going to, if you think about kind of a, a car coming from, from one spot to another, think about your transition timing function as being the acceleration along that path. So it's, it's accelerating or decelerating. And so ease in would be it's accelerating. So it's going to start out slow and then it's going to get faster. So let's, let's save this. And actually, I'm going to move this transition delay to 0 0.25. And let's, uh, let's restart this. So it should pick up a little bit at the end. Now, I'm going to do, I'm going to change this guy to be on the left uh, side of the screen. And let's say we're going to transition a thousand pixels. This should see it. See how quick that gets at the end? That's a big difference. It, when you got more real estate to see the difference, you can start to see it. So I'm going to undo all this stuff. Uh, that's what ease in is. And actually, let's just keep it. Let's keep it the way we had it. And let's do an ease out. So this should start really fast and then slow down. You guys can see that. Then there's ease in out. 
this is going to ease in for the first part and then ease out for the second one. So it'll slow, be slow, get faster, and then slow back down. And then there's there's lots more you can do in here with uh, cubic beziers. And I'm not the person to teach about these, but these are kind of different functions to make them do very specific things. So that one uh, starts out pretty quick and actually looks like it ends pretty quick. But there's a couple of uh, built-in samples here for Visual Studio Code that you guys can, uh, if you've got code, you can play around with. Um, and I'm just going to stick it with ease in. All right, so we're back to our centered our centered box. Now we can work on our slide left. So slide dash left. And this is going to be a transform again and a translate X. And slide left is going to be a negative 300 pixels. All right. And then what we need to do is come into our HTML and uncomment that one. So we save this. So now we see we've got both of them starting in the center, one going right, one going left. So I'm going to copy this function here. We're going to do the same thing a couple more times. And we're going to do a slide up and a slide down. And so up and down is going to be the y axis. So we're going to translate y. And slide up is negative 300 pixels. Slide down is 300 pixels. So save this. And we should have, oh, we need to come into our HTML and uncomment these here. So let's save it. And we should have, say, we need to save our CSS here. We should have them all start in the center and then all kind of kind of branch out. Top left, um, to the top, to the right, to the right, to the left, up and down at the same time. Now with our uh, transition, we can actually come in and do all of these things basically in one line. And the way that's going to look is we start off with uh, transition. And then we'll have the uh, transition property, so tran or excuse me, transform. And this actually should have been transform property is what I meant to do. Transform property up there. Then just transition in general is going to be uh, transform. And then we'll have the uh, the length, the duration, so two seconds. And then the second number, whatever the second number is in here, is going to be the delay. And then our timing function is going to be ease in. So now we can comment all of these and save it and we should get the same thing all right so that's a one-liner to do all the things that we just did in four different lines all right so we've got those let's come into our boxes here let's comment out these and I want to mention that there are certain properties that are the the most performant to transition on and those are going to be all of the transform properties so tr let's see if we can get some IntelliSense here transform there's translate there's scale to make things bigger or smaller, and there is rotate. So we can rotate by number of degrees, uh, some sort of angle to spin things around an axis. So those three and the opacity property are the most performant things that you can uh, transition and animate later on on. And there's, there's a couple of different reasons that go into this. So here's, here's a good video that I followed, uh, it's CSS Transition, it's an animation series part one, and this is from DevTips, this guy has really awesome design stuff, a lot of really powerful CSS stuff, uh, so he does transitions and animations, and he talks about why, uh, why things are more performant for transform properties and for opacity versus all these other things. And basically it's, uh, it's the, the need for the screen to repaint itself for those other properties, but not for the four properties that we talked about. So you guys can check out his video. There's a couple of more links that I've got here for you. One is by Brad Traversy, Traversy Media, CSS3 Animation and Transitions Crash Course. This guy has tons of really introductory videos. He's got so many of them on so many different topics. Definitely check him out. I watch almost every time he puts out a new video, I check it out and watch it. And then lastly, we've got uh, another CSS Tricks link. So this is the CSS, this is the CSS Tricks website going through and talking about transitions as well. And I think they mention the benefit to uh, doing the transform property, transform and opacity properties, those really optimized properties. Oh, there it is at the bottom there. So, oh, no, it's not. All right, so a couple of different links for you guys to check out if you want to learn more. Now we've got a couple more things I want to do in here. 
let's come back to our HTML. Let's start uh, commenting out a couple of these. So let's start with our scale up. And I'm going to set this transition uh, to be on all properties. And I'm going to come and do our scale up uh, class. And scale up is going to do a transform of scale. And we can do it three times as big. So this should scale up. All right, so that looks good. We can also come in and scale down. So 0 0.25, we'll cut it down by a quarter to what it was. And we're gonna need to uncomment the, oh, we can actually just change this to scale down if we want to. And now we should see, oh, it's scaled down and we didn't see the transition. So if we save CSS, it's gonna start big and it's gonna transition down. All right, so that's that's scaled down. Let's see, uh, rotate real quick, just to take a look at that. All right, so we got our box with a class of rotate. Rotate is gonna be transform, rotate, and then we can say 360 degrees. So this is gonna make a full turn over the course of two seconds. So let's save this. And this actually needs to be not just the, not just the number, but it has to have the degrees to follow it. So if, you, if I say this and refresh, it went ahead and rotated all the way around 360 degrees. All right, so we got that one. Now we can do our opaqueify, and I don't know if this is really a word or if I just made it up. I probably just made it up. Uh, but opaque, opaqueify, and we can set the opacity to zero. So we'll start out with an opacity. So you can see this kind of fade out there. We could also come in, we could set the opacity to zero to start, and then we could come in and set the opacity to one, so we transition from zero to one to have it kind of fade in. So that would be a fade in, fade out kind of thing. Uh, and the last one is, I just want to take a look at a hover on a button. So we'll see a little button here that's pretty ugly, I think. Just, And I want to select just a button tag. So I've got some style saved for our button. We've got just the font size, padding, border, color. And then we're setting the transition to transition on everything that changes. And the things that are gonna change when we hover are color, background color, border color, color, and cursor. So let's save this. So there's our button, come over here and hover. Now we get the, the color and background color change, the font size, I think font size stays the same. Uh, but we can, see, we can see that transition here. Now if we took away the transition, this would be like a hard, a hard stop, like what we've seen in our application, see how fast that is. But with this transition, it looks a little bit nicer, it's a little more subtle, and it looks pretty good. So that's the kind of thing that we're gonna take into our application. So let's come back, let's co close this one out. I'm gonna close these videos, come back to our working project. Now the first thing we're gonna do is come in and give that effect to our header title, so that will expand and change color. So let's come down to our nav bar. So we've got nav header here. We can say we wanna transition on all and 0.25 seconds. All right, and then we can do a nav header and a hover. And we're gonna set the color to the main accent. We're gonna set the font size to 28. Or actually, sorry, the letter spacing. Set the letter spacing to 10 pixels. And then we're going to do a transform of one point oh, scale of 1.05. So just make it a little bit bigger. So say this, let's come over, let's hover on it. We should see that kind of expand. Now you guys can play around with this. You can make it not so wide, wider, bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is just something to kind of uh, show you what a transition looks like. So the next thing we're going to do is have the add button. So when we hover on the add button, I'm just going to copy that, get rid of these. We just want to uh, do a transform and a scale. So we'll do a transform to scale 1.2. This is gonna be hover. And then we need to tell it what to transition on. So transition, uh, transform, and then two seconds, let's say, and no delay. Save that. Now we can come over here and we don't wanna actually do a 0.25 seconds here. So we should see this kind of scale up there. All right, so that's doing what we want. Now the next thing is the change on these colors. So if we come down to our button section uh, we've already got the hover changes here. Now we can just do a transition on, we'll just say all here. 
and we'll say this is going to be 0 0.25 seconds again and save that. Now we should see a little, it's hard to tell. Let's just make this bigger so you guys can actually see what it's doing. Uh, so let's do two and a half seconds. Now this should be a long transition. There we go. So just to prove that it's working, show you guys that, save it. And now we've got this kind of a little more subtle effect, but uh, gives us some good feedback on the buttons as we hover. So that's it for transition. We've added a couple of different, just kind of small details to the application, some scale, some letter spacing, uh, color changes. So that's gonna do it for this video. We're gonna start talking about animations in the next video. So let's go ahead and, and get there. So I will see you guys in the next video.